Hello you, it's me. Today we're going to do the quickfire fantasy book tag, which I was tagged to do by Peter over at the book blog, The Swordsmith, which I'll link down below. Make sure you go and check that out. He writes some great stuff. So thanks for the tag, Peter. The original tag creator, I will also link uh, to the video down below. And different questions will be marked on the timeline. I am going to try and suggest books for these prompts that I think people might not necessarily have heard of before. So get a pen. Number one, a five star read, Dark Cities. I am a huge fan of urban fantasy. You get two kinds of urban fantasy and I think the most common kind is when you get a fantasy story in an urban setting, which doesn't actually lend very much to the story at all, but puts magical things against a backdrop, which is very close to home for a lot of people and makes it feel very familiar and very appealing. But the other type for me is where urban fantasy gets really good. And that is when the urban bit is integral to the story. The city is part of the story. Its aesthetic is so heavy that it's inescapable. Where human development, human suppression of the natural environment is twisted back in on itself into something really strange. And I think in urban environments, because of class divides, because of city planning, because of a number of factors, we all have very different ideas of what urban means to us. And this means that while there are aesthetic things that run through the genre, this is a genre in which there can be so much variety and so much good political discussion while still managing to keep things on the edge of familiar, just threatening to tip over into bonkers. And this is a short story collection that really manages to showcase that variety. If you like urban fantasy, if you like dark, weird, twisted, cosmic urban fantasy, this is something I cannot recommend to you enough. Short story collection, incredible, please read it. Two, something you're always gonna recommend, Bus Lag. If you've watched any of my other review blogs or follow me on Twitter, you know by now that I will not shut up about China Mieville. The Baslag trilogy, in my opinion, is one of the best fantasy series ever written in the history of ever. I also give a huge amount of points, as you may know by now, for originality. And I guarantee if you read this, you will have not read anything like this before. The magic system is super weird. There are upwards of 10 completely unique fantasy races. Whenever the author was writing this, I've heard this in an interview, whenever he came up with an amazing idea that he couldn't figure out how to put into a story, he would just put it into Bus Lag. This is a patchwork mishmash of all the amazing ideas this author has had over the course of a lot of years. The first and last novel in this series both did win the Arthur C. Clarke Award, which is pretty weird because that is an award that is usually given to sci-fi. There are some elements of this book which could be argued are almost sci-fi, but this is absolutely a fantasy novel series. Each of the three books are individual stories and events in their own right, but there is a story running in the background of the three books which ties them together in a really incredible way. These are some hefty books, but honestly, I flew through them. Highly recommend. Always recommend. Number three own it, but haven't read it yet. Maud You by Alex Phoebe. I'm really excited to pick this one up. Got this as a fantastic piece of book mail from the publishers. The whole aesthetic of the book is insanely cool. The blurb sounds amazing. I really get the vibes from it that it's going to be similar to um, Mervyn Peake's Gormenghast. But yeah, I cannot wait to crack on with that. Number four, would read again. Galilee. I am a massive fan of Clive Barker. He has a reputation which is one that is well deserved, as a master of horror fiction and he has written some stuff over the years that you really can feel the ripples of and you can understand and see how much it has shaped the genre going forward but i think some of his best work some of his masterpieces have been his fantasy novels i've done some rereads recently of some of my favorites of his uh, weave world the great and secret show in magica but a long time ago i read a book of his called galilee it's got a really different vibe to a lot of his other stuff. It feels much more adult than a lot of his other stuff. It's a really strange book about these two powerful families in North America who have controlled American society from behind the scenes for hundreds of years, the Geary's and the Barbarossas. 
And this is a book about what happens when a forbidden love blooms between two members of the families. It feels like a historical saga. It talks about politics. It talks about human nature, metaphysics, interfamilial relationships, uh, what God means. And then you've got Barker's trademark dark magical fantasy sprinkled all over the top. I have vivid memories of this book hitting me in a really weird place, a really good place. But it's been nearly 10 years since I read it last, so I think I'm going to have to pick that up soon. Stay tuned for the review video, because I will be doing one. 5. In Another World. City of Saints and Mad Men. Slash Shriek, an afterword, which is kind of book 2 to that, but not really, but kind of, a bit. There seem to be a lot of people who have dipped their toe in Lake Vandermeer, read the Southern Reach trilogy, which is Annihilation authority, acceptance, and not read much else of his stuff. In the grand scheme of things, his Southern Reach trilogy, um, the Annihilation trilogy, with the exception maybe of Hummingbird Salamander, is like the least weird thing he has ever written. City of Saints and Mad Men is colonialism, is destruction, taken to the extreme end of what it could possibly be. It's about people who sail across an ocean, up a mighty river, and find a city of people called Greycaps, who in their eyes are very primitive but have a culture and a technology that revolves around fungus, around spores, around mycelium. To the point where you are constantly on the edge of, is this magic? I'm not sure. Out of fear and unwillingness to understand, as well as spreading religion and civilization, the Greycaps are almost wiped out by human colonizers pushed to live in the sewers as the colonizers pillage, burn to the ground, and then build on the ruins of their once beautiful city. City of Saints and Mad Men is weird. It's told almost like a travel brochure, culture brochure. It's about history and traditions in the city, which is now known as Ambergris, written in the form of pamphlets, journals, essays, diary entries. And the second book, Shriek, and afterward, is a story told within that city from the point of view of a woman who runs an art gallery and whose brother studies the Grey Caps, slowly getting sucked into their mysterious, un now underground society and uncovering all these wild, twisted secrets. Originality points. This is like nothing I've read before. I love when books break the mold and tell a story using an interesting format. This is very rich, very descriptive, very information heavy, and it took me ages to read it because of those things, but it is so worth your time. Number six, Back on Earth. The saga of the Pliocene Exiles, the first book of which is The Many Coloured Land. I'm trying to give a clever answer for this one, because it's back on Earth, but it's also back on Earth. Somebody discovers a way to exploit a rip in time and send things from the present back to the Earth's past in the Pliocene Epoch. They figure it's much too far in the past for people to affect anything in the present, affect anything in the future, so people start going through, taking a one-way trip back to a completely pristine environment in the hope of finding adventure, finding their fortune, on an undeveloped, empty, and nature-rich earth. This book follows the people who decide to make that journey, as they arrive 2.5 million years ago and find they're not alone. A humanoid race with advanced technology and psychic-based abilities that they're also able to awaken in the humans that arrive there are taking these humans that arrive as slaves, as workers. I won't give away more than that. It sounds like sci-fi, but I promise you it's not. This is absolutely a high fantasy story. So I'd love to hear your answers to this really cool book tag. Um, I will link some people down below that I'm tagging to do this. I'll link their channels. Make sure you go take them out. Thanks again for the tag, Peter. Uh, even if I don't tag you, take this tag, do it. Um, make sure you tag and link to the original creator, that's important. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for more single book reviews coming thick and quick, I read pretty fast. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Goodreads, also link down below. And if you like sci-fi as much as I do, don't forget to don't forget to join our Interstellar Book Club on Discord, which I'll link down below as well. And I'll see you soon for the next review. Bye.